Well, a battle, an old Swedish battle here. The second round of our European Tour 11 qualifier for the absolute privilege and pleasure of playing in Jena in Germany in September. Do we reckon Cantler's going to make it three for three? He's good at that sort of thing, isn't he? He's made it two for two so far. He may well make it three for three. Time will very much tell. If you're wondering what's so amazing about this weekend, there are Danish, Finnish, Icelandic, Lithuanian, and that's it. Um, World Cup spots up for grabs. Not going to be decided from this event, but potentially tomorrow's Pro Tour event could decide all. In fact, two Icelandic spots are up for grabs. The rest, Lithuania have got one up for grabs because Darius is a tour card holder. Vladimir Anderson holds a tour card, so he'll be playing alongside someone from the Danish contingent. Playing Cantela, who's miles top of that um, top of that order of merit, will be playing against the second best Finn. Have we found a World Cup of Darts? Possibly my favourite tournament. As we're looking to see our second 180 of the leg. Second 140, not bad. In fact, great start from both. And also, they'll probably think this 133 has to go. Isn't going to. Good last start there. 93. Leaves himself tops. Well, 19 has gone 13 for tops. Fair enough. Well, I'm glad that changed to 40. I was thinking, how could my maths have gone so wrong? But yes, 40 is the score, is the uh, remaining score for Osland after that nice 93. Victor has teed himself up just in case. Oh, I think for a split second, everyone may have thought that was in. And no, second dart of the double 10, further away than the first dart. Eighteen darts each thrown. They started off beautifully, both of these players. Maybe a few early nerves. But double seven gets it done in the end. And I would say the Swedes takes the opening leg, but they're both Swedish, aren't they? Well, does that ruin the rhythm slightly? Two very well thrown darts. Throws quite hard, doesn't he? Does Victor? I think that rhythm was a little bit ruined there, but he darts one and two. Excellently done. Excellently done. So remember, you can check all of the goings on here at the uh, fourth weekend of our Nordic and Baltic series live from Finland. You can check out everything that's going on around the boards, tv.darkconnect.com. Nice and straightforward. I can tell you that three Icelanders have played. Three Icelanders have been defeated in the first round. Unlucky for Matthias and Fridriksson against Norris Glegler of Latvia. And Matthias was leading. I think he was 5-4 up. He must have lost those last two legs. Well done to Norris, who's nicked that last leg decider. And we saw Kali, Carl Helge Jonsson, 6 nil down to Marco 
Cantilla. And we saw another Icelander 6 0 down to another Finn. And Isabel Nord Skog was on the receiving end of that one. Beaten 6 0 by Hanu Sorninen. Three? Wow. Double nine made things slightly awkward. Yeah, Tom has got a little outside chance here. Doesn't want to use more than three darts, but may get more than three darts. 60 leaves bullseye. That leaves the red bits. And that would have been for the leg. A good leave, though. Look at this for a leave. Never a nice one, is it? Is um, double three. Now, I don't know about busting. I don't know. If you'd rather be on double three than double one, fine. I mean, I'd rather be on double two, personally. But, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a an awkward one. I could see why you'd bust double th you'd bust three. That makes sense. But anyway, it doesn't matter in the end. As Anton doubles his leads after tactically or unintentionally leaving double eighteen by hitting the fourteen on bullseye. Intentions or otherwise, it all counts the same. We've got Jon Kirkby is 5-2 up against J.P. Pakarinen. I was about to say, state the obvious, why don't you? Lots of Finnish players this weekend. But considering the fact that we're in Finland, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It's a bit like whenever we go to Iceland. The Icelanders come out in their droves. They really do. Icelanders I've never heard of giving it a go. Ivan Springborg and Daniel Larson. Larson is 4 0 down, averaging less than 60. Very unusual for Daniel. Everyone's allowed a little day off, aren't they? But very unusual indeed. Ivan Springborg leads that one by four legs to nil. Ivan's averaging 72 in that one. You might expect, not necessarily expect, but you might think if Ivan's averaging 72, Daniel could be 4 0 up. Talking of 4 0 up, Jeffrey de Graaf has just won the fourth leg against Finn Nico Canervo. I'm telling you now, it's only a matter of time before Jeffrey de Graaf wins something. But then again, every single event, I say Jeffrey de Graaf is going to win. One eighty. Is that the third? I think it might be the third. I've lost count. We've hit lots. We've hit lots and lots. Is it? Is he? Right, I, I was wondering, was the caller just working out what was scored there, but no. Amending that last score from Osland and the 180 to leave a Shanghai. And you'll get a go at this Shanghai. Oh, nice bullseye. I don't think that's in. That certainly isn't in. And neither is that Harbs' score. Anton then, to go halfway there. Double eight. Right, let's see if Victor can do something. You get it, it's a bit of a, a play on words. Ting strong, never mind. Double top. Double top. Double top's not there. Not, uh, they're both, I mean, look at the averages. You know, they're both um, playing the, the leg play, the scoring phase of the legs, pretty similarly, nothing in it. I think Anton might be just a little bit more clinical than those doubles. That being said, oh, has he squeezed it in there? I think he has. Just check the confirmation of the dart or the score, but yes, he has. Wasn't far away from busting. Did squeeze that double four in last dart in hand. Jeffrey de Graaf, 5 0 up. Ivan Springboard, 5 0 up. And Oscar Lukasiak has beaten Herko Ravoni, uh, Raivonen. By six legs to nil. Well done to Oscar. Oscar played. Oscar played in his first. Was it Oscar who played in his first Euro Tour? Not that long ago, like last month, after trying to qualify for so long. I think that might be the case. Nice to see him winning games. Vega Elivul is out, beaten six three to Sammy Hawkstorm. Benjamin Drew Royce, 6-0 up 
over Yanis Mustafayevs. A bit of a first round game. Yunus Lane of Finland has been Claus Bendix Nielsen of Denmark. That was a 6 3 victory for Yunus. Both players averaging over 80. 84, but nearly 85 for Yunus. Impressive stuff indeed. That being said, Matthias Fredriksson played in a bit of a game. Both were averaging 84. In fact, Matthias exactly 84. Norris 84 and a half. And Norris overcame that one last leg decider, as I said earlier. Unlucky to Matty. I'm sure we'll see Matty tomorrow in what could be a massive day for Icelandic darts. Remember, Iceland have never played in the World Cup of Darts before. First time this year. Well, we might see Victor go in the same sort of ruse on the 126, but not that it particularly matters. We, okay, we won't. If Anton was on a finish, we'd probably see 19s used there. But it mattered not in the end. He's tried to tee it up, has done so pretty well. Should get two darts and a double of his choosing. To get his first leg on the board. Double 16. There it is. No dramas whatsoever. And Tingstrom. Hopes to win five more of those. We have another result that's come in, and our second last leg decider of the round. It was two Finnish players. It was two very good and very well-established Finnish players. The names of the Finnish players are Timu Haru and Yanni Keskinarkas. Keskinarkas. That's how I say it. It's probably Keskinarkas. Uh, Yanni lost that one, 6-5. Timu victorious there. Sounded like a very good game indeed. Both averaging 80 or thereabouts. And maybe I do put a bit too much um, emphasis on the averages. But I just find it interesting as a stat. I can confirm, Larson was not having a very good tournament. He actually lost out that one in the end. 6-0 to Ivan Springborg. Some reach the last 32 of the first Pro Tour event. There's Victor Tingstrom. Doubles his score. And he's now throwing to level things up again. So we're all with throw all of a sudden. Anton looking like he was maybe going to run away with it. I mean, certainly in the finishing side of things. Victor had other things to say about that. Jeffrey de Graaf nearly there. 5 1 up over Nico Canervo. In fact, is not nearly there, is now there. 6 1. He has won that one, has Jeffrey de Graaf. And he's representing Sweden after living there for a number of years. It's his first season in the PDC Nordic in Baltic. And a very good addition as well. Always there or thereabouts is Jeffrey. He was third in the order of merit before this weekend began. 
Benjamin Drew Royce, very, very close fourth. So that's just an interesting one to see the battle of who's going to finish higher. One more PDC Nordic and Baltic weekend to follow. That's in Latvia. I'll tell you when that is. But before we do, let's see if Anton can pin this double 16 to regain that little bit of daylight. We're just about right in the corner of that double eight. So it does regain a bit of daylight. It's a break of throw as well. Um, yes, it is on the 14th to the 16th of July, PDC Nordic and Baltic Latvia. Where we will have two Pro Tour, sorry, Euro Tour qualifiers, as well as two Pro Tour events taking place in the lovely city of Riga. And I can say that with experience, because I have been and would thoroughly recommend it. What did I do? I went skiing in Riga. The only other time I've skied, and possibly the last time I skied, let's just say I wasn't very good. But um, it's the wonderful thing about darts. You don't need to be good at negotiating cold weather and downhills on great big skis. Right. Be good at chucking tungsten into sizal. Happy days. Well, Anton's left the big fish. Victor can throw what he likes here. Isn't going to leave a finish, but could leave it handy. That is the textbook definition of leaving it handy. It's not a finish. It's as best as you could do. Because this does now mean Anton really needs to get the 117.6 darts. And that was an aim, a shot at bullseye. Well, whose leg is it? Who wants it more? Nothing in this one. I'll hazard a get at Anton winning this leg in the next visit. Double nine? This is the double nine. Yeah, that's my guess. Anton winning in the next visit. However, Victor could prove me wrong. In two or three darts, it is still on. Triple 19, not on anymore. He's launched that last start very quickly. 36, yeah, it was where he wanted. 14, leaves, leaves 40. It was an accurate dive. It was a very central single 40, and I'll have you know. But that awkward... Hold on, let's just wait and see. Right, there we go. 18, there you go. So that awkward, I was going to say, the awkward um, shot at bullseye for Anton. Could have caused an issue or two. That was from the 170, wasn't it? Yeah. We're all right. Double nine, which is what he went for. There you go. Gets the double nine. Yeah, because you got that treble 16. He left him the double. Anyway, gets the double. So turns out, after me deliberating, I actually ended up getting that one spot on. So thank you very much. The tipster. Robbie the tipster dove, you can call me. No, don't, because all I ever do is back Jeffrey DeGraff. And... But then again, if you keep backing him, he's going to win eventually. So never know. You never know. Anyway, one thing I can tell you is a Swedish person is going to win this game because, well, the fact they're both Swedish kind of helps. Uh, what else have we got going on around the boards? Yanni Eljoki, Finland. He is through against Jensen Solbakken. Yanni Lorila 
5 nil up against Paris Hornen. Yuka Kravy in an all-finish battle. 5-2 up over Marco England. And a couple of games just started. Oh, Anton, um, Anton Ostland in another... Well, Victor is throwing very fast, isn't he, when he's not kind of getting his way. But he's not playing badly at all. There's nothing in it. In fact, you look at the averages. Oh, talking of... Oh, come on then. Come on then. Oh, <laughs> that would have been rather special. A wonderful way to win. Well, there you go. His third dart there wasn't thrown away. He... Kind of drives it backwards and forwards very quickly. Ends up in the treble 19. He's on a finish. It may be academic. Anton Oslan needs single nine. Needs a double eight. And gets it. That is the textbook way to check out 25. And a bit of frustration, I think, there from Victor. I think he knows he can do a little bit better. Um, but it is Anton Osland who wins the battle of Sweden. He's through to the next round. He's going to be playing the winner of our next game on this streaming board.